Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we switch the language? No, I'm not gonna pull a Jake Paul on you here, don't worry. But the last video here on the YouTube channel discussed the idea of Red Wings player Elmer Soderblom potentially being a Calder candidate. This video, we're switching up the tracks because we're going over the guy that I actually predicted to win the Calder in my own predictions video, and the guy whom I feel I was kind of wrong about. Not because he's a lot worse than I thought he would be. Oh, he's proving me wrong because I thought he'd score 20 goals, but nah, he's probably gonna score like five. It's not like that. No, I was wrong about this player because I apparently severely underestimated him and how good he really was going to be to kick off his NHL career. Let's head over to the West Coast, up there in depressing, rainy Seattle, Washington, and talk about the Seattle Kraken's second overall pick in the 2020. 21 NHL entry draft, Maddie Beneers. Because boy, oh boy, do I think I severely underestimated how good he would be. If you go over to the last year's worth of videos talking about Maddie Beneers, not even strictly focusing on him, but just kind of highlighting him once in a while, you talk about the prospects in the 2021 draft, Owen Power, Beneers, first and second overall. I kind of went out there the entire 2021 draft season and waxed poetic several times about how the 2021 draft was not going to be as strong of a draft as 2019 or 2020 or 2022 or 2023 even. I went out there several times and said, hey, Owen Power going first overall in 2021? Okay, I can see it, but he wouldn't have gone first overall above Lafreniere. He wouldn't have gone first over Jack Hughes. He wouldn't have gone first over Shane Wright. But guess what? Shane Wright didn't go first. He went fourth. Connor Bedard is a similar conversation, but I feel like he's in a completely different stratosphere, so we're not going to talk about 2023. But Matty Beneers was always just second behind Owen Power. And I made several videos saying, hey, Matty Beneers could be a number one center on a bad team, but a really extraordinarily good two center, or second line center, excuse me, on a cup contending team. He's going to go out there and be a second overall pick who just knows how to do everything well. He can defend well, he reads the play well, he can facilitate the puck well, he can carry the puck into the offensive zone well, he can shoot well, he can score well, he can play make well, he can pass well, he just does everything well. There isn't really a hole in Maddie Beneers' game. But to me, it was all just a question as to how far that would take him, because of course, being an NHL player who doesn't make any mistakes is good, but does that mean you're going to score 100 points? Not necessarily. I kind of saw Matty Beneers maxing out as a 70-80 point guy in his prime, going out there with some very good two-way capabilities who could penalty kill well and just be a rock on a team's center core. But I think so far, Matty Beneers has watched all the videos that I made about this guy, talking about his ceiling and the projection and saying, you know, I feel like I'm better than what that Lego guy is saying I could be. And that's the best type of result that I like to see. So, let's go over Matty Beneers because when it comes to his NHL gameplay, hey, it's been nothing short of spectacular. After starting out his draft plus one season with the Michigan Wolverines once again, he was over a point per game. He had 43 points in 37 games played, which is great. Michigan was a really good team. You had Owen Power also suiting up for that squad again. But in the very limited sample that Beneers had with the Kraken at the end of 21-22, in 10 games played, the guy had nine points. And... He was already under a point per game. You could definitely see just the pizzazz and how confident he was, how capable his offensive productivity was at translating to the NHL because he made some very good cross-seam passes. He made some very good shots. He could absolutely snipe a puck like crazy. And I didn't realize that his shooting was that good. You talk about Seattle Kraken prospects and young guys and their absolute game-changing ability to snipe it from any angle. I thought for sure Shane Wright would be that guy. But nah, I guess Beneers is there too, because even in the preseason, Beneers was making some crazy snipes over goaltenders' gloves, top corner, off the bar and in. It was just incredible, the snipe show that Beneers was able to provide. And I was like, hey, this guy is carrying so much momentum from last season, and he's looked so good in the preseason, torching the Vancouver Canucks in all the games that he's played against them. This guy's going to win the Calder. And now you have yourselves the start of Benir's career where he has had four points in the three games that he played. 
two games ago for the Seattle Kraken against the LA Kings, wherein Seattle won 4-1, to Beniers had himself an assist. He also had a goal disallowed, which was unfortunate, but if you combine everything that Beniers has done from the end of the 21-22 season to the beginning of the 22-23 season, Beniers legitimately has 13 points in his first 13 NHL games. Here's the stat from NHL PR that makes things even more crazy when you take a look at it. Matty Beniers of the Seattle Kraken has joined Jonathan Taves and Joe Sackick as the third teenager in league history to find the score sheet in at least 11 of his first 12 NHL games. Now, that stat is very specific, but, I mean, if your only company is Sackick and Taves, that's pretty good to me, man. Here's the stat on the graphic. Beniers became the sixth player in the NHL's modern era since 1943-44 to score points in at least 11 of his first 12 NHL games. He joined Sakic, Dmitry Kvartanov, Jonathan Taves, Rob Goudreau, and Timo Solani, but of those names, only Sakic, Beniers, and Taves were teenagers when they did it. And if you're asking me, I mean, Joe Sackick was one of the best players ever. Jonathan Taves had a very good career, multiple Stanley Cups, so good for him. But Matty Beniers, the second overall guy that I kind of thought should have been placed after guys like Shane Wright in this year's draft and probably would not have gone over Lafreniere, maybe even Byfield in 2020. And I certainly for sure was taking Jack Hughes and maybe even Capo Caco over Matty Beniers if you had to compare 2019 to 2021. I was a lot lower on the 21 draft class in general, not just Beniers, but everybody in that draft class comparative to prior years. And now it's like, whoa, Beniers is doing something at 19 years old that hasn't been done since Taves and Sackick. So, yeah, I think he's kind of proven me wrong there. Now, of course, there is an entire other conversation to happen with Seattle Kraken centers. You could talk about Shane Wright because that guy has been demoted and benched and played on the fourth line. It hasn't really been the best transition into the NHL from a deployment standpoint, but when it comes to Beniers, he's been given all the opportunities. Now, you could say it's because, okay, NCAA development, he had played against men and he was really good last season, so there's more reign, there's more ability for the coaching staff to say, yeah, we're confident that Beniers is going to do what we need him to do, therefore we're giving him X amount of minutes versus Shane Wright, who's only being played six minutes a night. It's going to be interesting seeing how exactly everything unfolds throughout the rest of the year, but I will say if Shane Wright has his breakout party soon, you got to watch out for Seattle, man. I hate to say that because I'm a Vancouver fan and I got family in Seattle and I want to foster that rivalry so badly, but Shane Wright and Matty Beneers both going out there in their primes, potentially sniping goals from everywhere... It's gonna be an absolute terror show for the rest of the Pacific Division. And sure, while Seattle might not be the Vegas Golden Knights going to the Stanley Cup Finals in their very first year of inception, you just gotta wait a little bit. There is a plan here, and the Kraken have themselves some players that are brewing and looking to become stars. So, ton of the Conslayer thoughts about Matty Beniers and everything he has done so far. Has he proved you wrong too? Because for me, I'm starting to feel like that definitely has been the case, but... You can let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did you think he was going to be this good the entire time? Are you surprised to see him producing 12 points in his first 12 NHL games as a 19-year-old? Does it surprise you that he's been this successful at finding the net? If you don't have him winning the Calder, who do you have winning instead? Is it Owen Power? Is it McTavish? Is it Marco Rossi? Who else? Talk to the console your thoughts about Matty Beniers and the Seattle Crack, and I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And... Bye.